Ms. Manning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to our witnesses for being here today. Um, we have seen a, a rise of anti-Semitism on college campuses across the country, and according to ADL's most recent audit of anti-Semitic incidents, anti-Semitic activity on college and university campuses has increased by 41% in 2022 compared to the previous year. College and university leaders play a key role in responding to these types of situations. They must ensure that no one is punished for their protected speech just because it discomforts some, and simultaneously, they must use their moral authority to counter hateful and anti-Semitic speech with timely, specific, and direct responses. So how can administrators, staff, faculty, and all community members more effectively respond to hateful speech, including anti-Semitic speech, while fulfilling the promise of creating educational institutions that both safeguard free expression and ensure that all members of the community feel safe and welcome? And Ms. Nozell, for you. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. There's a lot that the university can do to address bigotry and hatred, whether it's anti-Semitism or anti-LGBT or racist speech on campus. It happens through education. It happens through nurturing and supporting student groups that mobilize and that unify and bring people together to draw attention to these issues. It happens through ensuring open discourse, that there aren't topics uh, that are off limits, that uh, you know, even if it's robust debate on, say, issues of Israel-Palestine, which can be very contentious, which can lead, lead to claims of harm on both sides, that there is space for those, discuss, those even very challenging and sometimes uncomfortable conversations, that that is something that the university stands for and makes possible. So there's no contradiction between creating a hospitable, welcoming environment for students from all backgrounds, be it racial, religious, or otherwise, and robust protections for free speech. In fact, they're mutually reinforcing. But what is the best way to help administrators and professors and, and faculty understand that this is not an either or? It's a, it's a, a yes and. How, how can we provide the information and the tactics and techniques they need to be effective in both of these areas? You know, I think it's a matter of fostering greater emphasis, greater training, greater discussion. That's what we've been doing as PEN America across the country, convening faculty, students, and university leaders from across the political spectrum. People have been on opposing sides of some of these inflammatory incidents to get them around the table and talk about, you know, why did they invite that speaker? What was going on? Uh, how did other people react to that? What was un unanticipated? Training people on the precepts of the First Amendment and free speech and the role of the university. And we find when you do that, people understand it. It clicks. They recognize this is not a contradiction, that even if you're, if you're a DEI official, you can do your job without impinging on freedom of speech. Unfortunately, I think that training is not always in place, and we've just got to reach uh, more widely and broadly to get to those who are in those roles. Do you believe we can use DEI to encompass uh, discrimination against uh, Jewish students and other kinds of other minority groups? Yes, I think DEI should look at all forms of diversity on a campus. And are there other proactive things that universities should de do to educate not just their faculty and administrators, but their students about the importance of both free speech and accepting the fact that, that people come from different backgrounds and have different cultural, religious beliefs? I think so. Look, I think it's extremely important. Overwhelmingly, college students in this country are progressive. You know, we hear that in this panel that their conservative students are in the minority on these campuses, and so we need to pre present the ideas of free speech and the First Amendment in ways that make sense to progressive students that resonate with the struggles that they want to wage. They need these rights to be protected in order to advocate for climate justice or gender justice, and so it's a matter of. If, if, we, if it becomes a partisan cause, if they're beset by laws and restrictions that uh, constrain their ability to study uh, theories uh, and, and topics in American history that touch on race or religion, they're, they're going to be alienated from the principle of free speech. I think that's a real risk with the tactics that are being pursued right now, this heavy hand of the state being inserted uh, in the form of legislation to dictate what can and can't be taught and studied on campus.
Thank you. I wish we had time for a longer discussion, but my time has expired and I yield back. Thank you.